Hello everyone, welcome to another day with Power Query. My name is Alejandra Corbat and today I'm going to show you an example where we can use table split at. Uh, here on my desktop, I have a folder that is called demo table split at. I have a file that is called split at demo. I'm going to double click there uh, so you can see the content of this file. I have just two tables here. Uh, it has the sales of this product from 2016 to 2021 per quarter. I'm going to close the file and I'm going to go to Excel. Here in a new workbook, I'm going to go to data, get data from file, from PDF. I'm using Microsoft 365. If your uh, version in Excel doesn't have this option, no worries. I'm going to cancel here. Uh, you can go to data, find where you have get data from file and you can get it from Excel workbook or you can get it even from text CSV. Click at any of them. Of course, you won't see the PDF. You will have a box where you can see text files. Click at the um, drop down list and select all, uh, all files. And then you will see your PDF file. Double click there. The navigator will show me the content of this file. I will have a table and I will have a page. Unfortunately, my table has my two tables included, right? So that's the issue. And that's why we need to use this table split add. Uh, I'm going to select the table and I'm going to click at transform data or here on the table, I can right click and select transform data. The Power Query Editor will open and I will see the content of my table. And here on the right, I can see the steps that Power Query applied and I have changed type. I don't like this step because as you can see here on the formula bar, the names of the columns are hard coded and I don't like that, <laughs> especially at this um, stage of my query. So I'm going to remove that step. So we need to do it as dynamic as possible. Uh, so here on my navigation step, you will notice that it's coming from the source. It's bringing the ID table 001 from my column data. If we go one step before this, uh, my step uh, source, you will see table 001 and it's bringing the table that is coming inside of my column data for that specific row. Right, so here at the bottom, you can see that is the table that is bringing here on my navigation step. Excellent. Um, on the left, the, the, the query section here, I have the name of the query, which is the name of the table. So I'm gonna rename this as demo, enter, and I'm gonna hide this over here. So we have more room again for the preview. Uh, here, what I'm gonna do is let's split this. I'm going to create a new step, fx on the formula bar. After the equal, I'm going to say table split. So I'm going to show you the difference between table split and table split add. So table split first. I'm going to open uh, parentheses. I'm going to provide the table that is coming from my previous step, table 001. I don't know why Power Query always does that with the uh, navigation step. It calls the step navigation, but really the code grabs the name of the table that I'm working with. Remember that when we look at the navigation, we saw table 001. That is what the code is referring to. So in here, I'm going to say table split, and I need to provide a number right here. If you see page size as number, let's say if I want to provide two, because I think Power Query will split my table in two, that is not true. So what Power Query will do is create several tables with two rows in every single table. OK, so if at the end you don't have two or three or any number of rows that you indicated here, it's going to just that table will have just whatever is left over. Right. You can have one or whatever the name, the number is. So in this case, they are they are all in twos. So that's fine. But this is not what I want. So I want two tables. I don't want several tables with two rows only. So for that reason, let me delete this step. And we are going to go back, create that new step, and then use the table split add. Table split add. Open parentheses. The table is coming from that table 001. And now I need to provide the count number. I need to provide the number of the row that I want to split add. If I provide two or three, let's say, if I provide two, for example, close parentheses and I press enter, it's going to keep two rows in the first table right here and then the remaining is going to go to the next table which is all of this 
that is not what I want. That's why I wanted, I'm going to go one step before this, um, that's why I wanted to split at row 11. So I'm going to go back to my custom one step and instead of two, I'm going to provide 11. I'm going to press enter and now you will see that you have your first table and then your second table. Both tables have the first row that really belongs to the column names, right? So let's promote that. And I'm going to transform these nested tables. They are nested in a list. So I'm going to create a new step. And that reminds me, I didn't uh, rename my step custom. So that is going to be called split. The next step, the new, the, the one that I just created, I'm going to use list transform because what the uh, table is split at returns as a result is a list. So list transform, this one, open parenthesis, the list is coming from my previous step split, which is this list that we're seeing here, comma, and what is, what do I want to do inside of that list? I want to transform the nested tables, and that is going to be table promote headers. And open parenthesis, and I want that Power Query looks at every single line of this list. I have only two, but but eh, still <laughs> needs to check at every single one. Close parenthesis for the list transform, enter. If I take a look to my nested tables, now I can see that the first line has been promoted as headers. Perfect. The next thing that I need to do, I want to unpivot other columns so I can keep all the similar information in one column. For example, the years and the quarters in one column and the amounts in another column, right? Uh, let's work with these nested tables. Here on list transform, after the each, I'm going to um, press shift enter to go to the next line and I'm going to work with nested lets. I'm going to provide the let, shift enter, a is going to be my first variable, comma. My next variable will be b. This is equal to table on pivot other columns, this one. Open parenthesis, the table is coming from my previous variable a, comma. What is the, the columns that I want to leave as they are? And that is going to be my column product number. Uh, product number. I don't want to do anything with that. I want to keep it as is. Oh, I need, need to provide that as a list. So I need to provide the curly brackets. If I had more columns to keep as they are, like on the left, then I list them there and I separate them by the comma inside of the curly brackets, right? So but I have only one, so I just provide a product name, product number, sorry. And what is the name of the column where I'm going to put the years and the quarters? That's going to be the name. Year dash quarter. A comma, and what is the name of the column where I'm going to have the values or, or the amount? That's going to be amount. I'm going to go to the, and before the last closing parenthesis, shift enter. I'm going to provide the in. For that reason, I didn't provide the comma at the end. So the last variable doesn't have a comma. That tells Pago Query it's time for the in expression. And then after the in expression, I need to provide the result, which will be the value of my variable B. Press enter after the parenthesis, the closing parenthesis. And now you will see that we have on pivot other columns. Now we are able to split our year and quarter. I can combine the columns now. I can combine this table, sorry, now, if I want to, or I can just keep transforming, right? So I can split this column on my nested table. Let's do that, so just to practice. Uh, we provide a comma after the closing parenthesis for the table on pivot other columns, shift enter. I'm gonna provide another variable. And I'm going to say equal, and this is going to be table split split column. And I need to say where the table is coming from, from my variable B, comma. And the source will be year dash quarter. That's the one that I'm going to split, and comma. And the splitter as function, split by the limiter, open parenthesis, I, I need to uh, provide the delimiter, that's going to be the space that is inside of quotation marks, space dash space, and now 
close parentheses and I'm gonna change the result for the value of my variable C and let's see what happens. Now I have, oh, I didn't provide the new names. I forgot that. So I provide the code, uh, in the code I said, well, I split by this, but I didn't provide the names of the new columns. And for that reason, it has year quarter one, year quarter two. So let's, let's fix that. After the closing parenthesis for the split, splitter, split text by the limiter, I can provide the column names as any. So I'm gonna provide it as a list. The first one will be year, uh, in quotation marks, comma. This next one will be quarter. And I think that's about it. Uh, let's see, click at the check mark and let's see what, what we get. Um, perfect, year and quarter, excellent. Now I'm ready to combine my tables. So here on the formula bar, uh, create a new step, fx to create a new step. I'm gonna say table combine, open parentheses to the tables as list. Well, I have the list already, so I'm just gonna close parentheses, enter. The, the list is coming from my custom to step, and there we go. Here we have all our tables combined with all the years, 2019, to actually 2016 to 2021. And we can go to home, close and load, close and load. We can create a pivot table if we want to. So let's see over here, pivot table, existing worksheet here on B2, say OK. And here we have the amount on the values, the year on the columns, same thing with the quarters and the product number right over here. And oh, there is something that I didn't change. Let's go to our query. I didn't change the data type. So go back to my query. And you can see that Control C plus to zoom in. You can see that the amount is coming as a text. Let me change that. I totally forgot that uh, whole number. And there is an issue. What is the error? I'm going to go home and I'm going to say keep errors here. And what is this? Oh, this is the one. If you remember when we went to the navigation, this is a null. But the problem in here is that this cell has a dot. Totally forgot about that. So we need to take care of that. So when we split this, actually here so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna filter those uh, my nested uh, tables i'm gonna filter so in here on my custom two uh, step where i was fixing all the nested tables i'm gonna add a new variable comma after the parentheses that is closing the table split column shift enter i'm gonna provide a new variable d equal table select rows open parentheses the table is coming from my variable c comma what is the condition i'm gonna say each amount does not equal the dot the dot is the problem I, the dot is the problem so here i'm gonna change the result as column d i press enter and let's go to the end of course i don't have any more errors i have nothing here uh, i'm gonna go close and load and i go to my pivot table let me remove the amount and then bring it again now that i change the data type and there you go here we have no more errors click inside of the pivot table in any of the numbers select number format number thousand separator no decimals i'm gonna say okay of course product nine we have no sales for the first years until 2019 which is correct perfect I hope you found this information useful. If you like it, please give the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Also, share it with anybody that you believe can benefit from it. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.